The series kicks off by taking us back to Logotown 22 years ago. Back then, this guy named Gold Roger, who everyone thought would be the Pirate King, got caught and was going to get executed right there in front of the whole town. The officer named Garp asked Roger what he wanted to say before they did it. Instead of saying sorry or asking for forgiveness from the big shots, Roger told everyone to go explore the ocean and find some hidden treasure he stashed somewhere. So, they went ahead and executed Gold Roger, but his last words totally shook the world. People got all inspired and started sailing the seas, hunting for the Pirate King's treasure, the One Piece. Fast forward to today, there's this young man named Monkey D. Luffy. He's out there in the middle of the sea, trying to bail out the water flooding his boat. But no luck, his boat's going down, so Luffy hops into a barrel to save himself. While Luffy's floating around, a gang of pirates led by this tough lady named Alvita gets into this crazy fight with another bunch of pirates. Alvita and her crew are way stronger, and they kick the other pirates' butts and take all their loot. After Alvita and her crew beat those other pirates, she started asking them about this pirate hunter who she thought wanted to catch her. Turns out the hunter had gone off to an island and wasn't after Alvita at all. She wasn't too happy about that, so she ended up killing the guy and told Kobe to clean up the mess. That night, while Kobe was cleaning Alvita's weapon, was surprised by Luffy who appeared from inside the barrel. Kobe was scared and thought Luffy might want to kill him, but Luffy just said he was super hungry and looking for food. Kobe explained they were on a ship with a pirate named Alvita, and he really hated pirates because they steal and kill. But Luffy disagreed, saying he knew a pirate who was kind-hearted. Then, the scene goes back in time about 10 years when Luffy was a kid. He lived in Windmill Village and couldn't wait for this red-haired pirate named Shanks to come back. Luffy idolized Shanks and even asked to join his crew. He even cut his own face with a knife to show he was serious. Back to the present, Kobe was puzzled about why anyone would want to be a pirate. Luffy got all excited and said being a pirate was a blast because they're free to do whatever they want, like going on adventures and hunting for treasure. But Kobe warned Luffy that finding the One Piece treasure was a tall order, because pirates from all over the world were searching for it too. When Luffy said he wanted to head to the Grand Line, Kobe told him it's like a pirate's graveyard with tons of crazy stuff that makes sailing there super tough. The Grand Line isn't just tough because of pirates, it's got scary sea monsters too. But Luffy wasn't scared, he was even more excited to go there. When Luffy and his pals were sneaking off the ship, they accidentally woke up Alvita and her crew. Luffy decided to stand up to Alvita because she was a mean pirate. She tried to attack him, but Luffy's got this rubber power that makes him immune to punches and stuff. He beat Alvita and tossed her into the sea with his Gomu Gomu pistol move. After that, he asked Kobe to join him on his adventures. Now, on an island called Sixus, there's this pirate hunter named Zoro. He got approached by a guy named Mr. Seven, who works for a gang called the Baroque Works. Mr. Seven wanted Zoro to join them, but Zoro said no way. So Mr. Seven attacked, but Zoro's a master swordsman, and he sliced Mr. Seven in two. The next day, Kobe asked Luffy about his power. Luffy said he got it from eating a devil fruit that used to belong to Shanks when he was just a kid. Now, let's go back in time a bit. There were some bullies led by Higuma who tried to mess with Shanks in front of a crowd. But Shanks didn't let it bother him much and the bullies eventually left. But Luffy, who was watching, called Shanks a coward. After that argument with Shanks, Luffy tried to run off. But Shanks grabbed his hand, and something weird happened. Luffy's hand got all stretchy because he ate a devil fruit. Now in the present, Luffy has a plan. 
He wants to sneak into a nearby marine base to grab a map of the Grand Line and drop off Kobe. Because Kobe's dream has always been to become a marine since he was a kid. Meanwhile, in another part of the East Blue, there's a girl named Nami. She tricks two guys pretending to be dying and then steals their ship. Back to Luffy and Kobe, they finally reach Shell's town, where there's a marine base. They stop at a bar to grab some lunch. At the same time, Zora walks in carrying the parts of the guy he sliced, Mr. Seven. Now Nami shows up at the bar, acting all flirty with a marine. Then, a little girl named Rika bumps into a guy named Helmeppo and drops her food. Helmeppo gets all angry and curses at Rika. But Zoro eats the food and tells Helmeppo to apologize to Rika. Instead, Helmeppo challenges Zoro, which was a big mistake because Zoro can handle himself. While Zoro deals with Helmeppo and some marines, Nami knocks out the marine she was flirting with and takes his uniform. Helmeppo tells Zoro that his dad is Captain Morgan, the boss of the marines in Shell's town. Zoro insists on meeting Captain Morgan and wants payment for taking down Mr. Seven. Captain Morgan is interested in having Zoro join his crew, but Zoro declines. Instead, he wants payment, but because Zoro fought the marines at the bar, he gets a tough punishment, seven days in the sun without food or water. That night, Luffy was pretty impressed by what Zoro did when he defended Rika from those marines. Kobe questioned why marines, who were supposed to protect people from pirates, were attacking innocent folks. Luffy told Kobe that just like there are good and bad pirates, there must be good and bad marines too. He wanted to be a good pirate, and he encouraged Kobe to be a good marine. The next day, Helmeppo approached Zoro, who was still tied up and left in the sun. Helmeppo accidentally revealed that his dad planned to kill him when his punishment was over. Zoro teased Helmeppo because he took his sword. Meanwhile, Nami disguised herself as a marine and sneaked into the base. At the same time, Luffy used an underground water passage to sneak in and found Zoro. Luffy freed Zoro and introduced himself as someone who'd become the Pirate King. He asked about Zoro's dream, and Zoro wanted to be the world's best swordsman. Zoro didn't want to join Luffy's crew, even though Luffy saved him, and that was okay with Luffy. Over in the library, Nami tried to steal a Grand Line map, but got caught by Marines. She managed to beat them, but then Luffy showed up and realized she wasn't a Marine, because he recognized her from the bar. Luffy and Nami headed to Morgan's office to swipe a map of the Grand Line. On their way, they bumped into Morgan, who got all suspicious. Thankfully, Nami convinced Morgan that she was a Marine, and Luffy was her prisoner. Morgan bought it and let them go. Meanwhile, Zoro broke into Helmeppo's room to get his sword back, and he planned to teach Helmeppo a lesson. When he learned that Nami had snatched Morgan's office key, Luffy praised her and invited her to join his crew. But Nami was clear, she really didn't like pirates. Luffy and Nami found Morgan's hidden safe under the floor, but Morgan figured out they weren't marines and that Luffy was a sneaky pirate. He sounded the alarm and ordered the marines to arrest Luffy and Nami. Since Nami couldn't crack the safe, Luffy decided to yank it out of the floor, but it sent them tumbling out of the building. They got surrounded by marines who attacked. Just when things looked tough, Zoro showed up. He originally planned to leave the base, but couldn't ignore Luffy and Nami in trouble, especially since Luffy had helped him earlier. Morgan appeared and called them an interesting trio, a pirate, a pirate hunter, and a thief. But Zoro and Nami insisted they weren't part of Luffy's gang. While Nami battled Marines, Luffy and Zoro teamed up against Morgan. Zoro realized Morgan was super strong, so he used his Santori slash Three Swords technique to take on the Marine Captain. <laughs> Luffy and Zoro teamed up and finally beat Morgan. They hurried to get out of Shell's town. 
At the dock, they ran into Helmeppo, who had gotten his hair cut by Zoro. But Kobe showed up and dropped Helmeppo to help Luffy. Luffy asked Kobe to join him, but Kobe wanted to follow his dream of becoming a Marine. Luffy was happy for him and said they could still be friends even if they might become enemies someday. Meanwhile, Garp, out at sea, heard about some straw hat pirates causing trouble in Shell's town and getting a grand line map. On the other side, a pirate named Kabaji told his captain, Buggy, that the straw hat pirates had the grand line map. Buggy got real mad and promised to do whatever it takes to get that map. Now let's go back to young Luffy. He was learning to use his devil fruit powers. Makino warned him that anyone who ate a devil fruit would have trouble with the sea. Then Shanks came and said he was setting sail to find the One Piece and might not come back. Luffy was shocked and sad because he didn't expect Shanks and his crew to leave. Back to the present, Nami tried to open a safe but almost dropped Luffy's straw hat into the sea. Luckily, Luffy caught it and said the hat was his most treasured possession. Soon after that, Nami managed to open the safe and take the Grand Line map. But then, a red smoke cloud suddenly appeared and knocked Nami and Zoro out cold. Luffy stayed conscious for a bit and hid the map by swallowing it. They realized it was pirates who attacked them. Later, they woke up in the middle of a circus arena. The spectators were forced to watch the show with their feet chained to benches. Buggy, the pirate leader, showed up and was annoyed because Luffy and the gang had swiped the Grand Line map. Just like Luffy, Buggy wanted to find the One Piece and be the Pirate King, so he needed that map. Buggy threatened to kill them unless they handed over the map, but Nami tried to talk her way out of it. She distracted Buggy by showing off Luffy's strength. When she ran out of tricks, she saw that Buggy and his crew had wrecked the city and taken the residents hostage to watch their circus. Sadly, Nami got caught again, and Buggy ordered his crew to take her and Zoro backstage. Meanwhile, he planned to have some fun with Luffy. Buggy tried to hurt Luffy, but Luffy was tough and didn't seem to feel pain. So, Buggy decided to mess with Luffy's head by taking his straw hat. Buggy knew Shanks and said they used to be on the same pirate ship when they were Luffy's age, but he claimed Shanks betrayed him and suggested Shanks might betray Luffy too. So, Buggy got tricky and held a boy hostage to pressure Luffy. But Luffy surprised everyone by breaking free and using his signature move to behead Buggy. But Buggy had eaten a devil fruit, which let him split his body into pieces and control them. He put his head back on and knocked Luffy out. While Buggy tried to get info from Luffy about the Grand Line map, Nami worked on opening the lock to the cage where Luffy was trapped. Meanwhile, Kabaji showed up and wanted to face Zoro, because Zoro had killed Kabaji's brother earlier. But Zoro didn't regret it at all, which made Kabaji mad. He started throwing knives at Zoro. Over in the Marines, Kobe and Helmeppo began their first day as cadets. Garp arrived at the base and started looking into the Straw Hat pirate crew who attacked and stole the Grand Line map. Garp questioned Kobe because some Marines had seen him with Luffy at the bar. Kobe told Garp that he came to Shell's town with Luffy and Luffy had saved him from a pirate named Alvida. Kobe also mentioned that he told Luffy about his dream to become a Marine and Luffy didn't mind and even helped him. Garp asked Kobe if he was loyal to Luffy, and Kobe said Luffy was a pirate who should be tried. Garp seemed pleased with Kobe's answer and praised him for being honest. Garp's right-hand man, Bogard, mentioned that he found some wrongdoing at the base. The scene then switches to the past and shows Shanks and his crew fought with Higuma and his gang. Shanks tried to help Luffy, who Higuma had taken prisoner. They beat Higuma's gang, but Higuma took Luffy out to sea to kill him. Then, a huge sea monster showed up and attacked them, causing everyone to fall into the sea. Luffy couldn't swim and thought he was done for, but Shanks saved him. Shanks lost an arm protecting Luffy from the monster, 
but he didn't mind and hugged Luffy. When they got back to the village, Shanks and his crew were getting ready to set sail. Shanks spoke to Luffy, who said he'd become a pirate captain with a ship and a crew who'd protect each other, just like Shanks and his crew. Luffy confidently declared he'd be an even greater pirate than Shanks and find the One Piece to become the Pirate King. Hearing this, Shanks gave Luffy his straw hat, calling it his most prized treasure. Shanks told Luffy to return it when they met again, but by then, Luffy had to be a great pirate. Now in the present, Luffy wakes up trapped in a glass tank filled with seawater, which weakens him. Buggy wanted the Grand Line map from Luffy, and since Luffy refused to give it, Buggy started flooding the tank to drown him. Nami managed to free herself and helped Zoro defeat Kabaji. Then, she went to the circus arena to rescue Luffy, while Zoro handled Buggy's entire crew backstage. Luffy managed to escape the water tank and vomited out the map. Buggy tried to grab the map, but Luffy got his precious straw hat instead. Nami and Zoro tried to fight Buggy, but couldn't beat him because of his special powers. Luffy came up with a clever plan. He told Nami to open all the wooden crates in the arena, and they put every piece of Buggy's body in them. Zoro and Nami helped catch the pieces and closed the crates. Then, Luffy used his special attack to toss Buggy out of the circus tent. Next, Luffy told Zoro and Nami to free the townspeople who were captured by Buggy. The mayor asked if Luffy was the new ruler because he was a pirate. Luffy explained that he was a different kind of pirate and intended to set them free. Meanwhile, with Bowward's help, Garp uncovered the corruption by Morgan. They punished Morgan by tying him to a stake. Garp then announced that he would personally lead the mission to catch pirates and told the cadets to crush pirates' dreams to wipe them out. Meanwhile, the mayor and the townspeople thanked Luffy and the others for saving them from the pirates who had held them captive. Luffy and his friends bid farewell to the townspeople and continued their journey. Along the way, Luffy told Zoro that they should expect challenges on their path to their goal. If the journey was too easy, they might be heading in the wrong direction. Nami secretly used a hidden communication device to contact someone and inform them about obtaining the Grand Line map. Meanwhile, on Gecko Island, a young man named Osop tried to warn the residents about pirate attacks. However, because Usop was known for boasting, no one took him seriously and they kicked him out. Zoro informed Luffy and Nami that their ship had a leak. They decided to head to the nearest island to find a replacement ship, better suited for their journey to the Grand Line. Upon arriving at Deco Island, they hurried to Syrup Village, known for its shipbuilding expertise. Nami considered stealing a ship, but Luffy insisted on acquiring one through honest means, even though they were pirates. Zoro noticed a wanted poster for Buggy with a reward of 15 million berry and regretted not capturing him for the bounty. On the other hand, Buggy managed to reassemble his body, but a man named Koro Obi from Arlong's crew suddenly appeared and knocked him out. While Luffy and his friends searched for a new ship in the shipyard, Kobe caught Garp's attention with his maritime skills. Garp invited Kobe to play Go to further assess his abilities. Luffy eventually found a ship he liked, and Usopp told him he could introduce him to the ship and shipyard owner in Syrup Village, who happened to be his best friend. Usopp extended an invitation to Luffy and the others to meet his best friend, Kaya, who happened to be a millionaire. Although born into a wealthy family, Kaya was now an orphan living with only a butler and some household staff. Observing the butler and staff's discomfort with Usopp's presence, Nami and Zoro initially thought Usopp was exaggerating his friendship with Kaya. However, upon meeting the kind and friendly Kaya, Nami and Zoro started to believe that Usopp truly was her best friend. While Luffy and the gang freshened up and changed for dinner, Usopp secretly slipped into Kaya's room to give her a birthday gift. Kaya's butler, Clahador, encouraged her to drink some tea to ease her pain as she was suffering from an illness. Meanwhile, Zoro mentioned that Clahador looked familiar and felt he had seen him somewhere before. 
In addition to Luffy and his friends, Kaya also invited her lawyer, Mary, who managed her family's assets following her parents' passing. During dinner, Kaya's chef, Muchi, served her a special blue cream soup that Kaya had hoped for seafood. Luffy expressed interest in buying Kaya's ship, revealing their pirate identity. He tried to convince Kaya to part with a particular ship he had found in the shipyard. However, Kaya's illness suddenly flared up, and Clahador escorted her back to her room. On another front, Helmeppo informed Garp that they had found a wrecked ship believed to belong to Luffy and his friends. Upon hearing this, Garp assigned Kobe and Helmeppo to head to Gecko Island and capture Luffy. Meanwhile, Buggy, who had been captured by a pirate named Arlong, provided information to Arlong about the Straw Hat Pirates acquiring a Grand Line map. He convinced Arlong to let him assist in capturing Luffy and obtaining the map. That night, Mary discovered Clahador's treacherous intentions to control Kaya's wealth and planned to expose Clahador's betrayal to Kaya. Unfortunately, Clahador thwarted Mary's plan and killed him. While Luffy and Zoro went to the kitchen in search of food and to chat with Usopp Nami, who had planned to pilfer valuables from Kaya's home, inadvertently wandered into Kaya's bedroom. Seeing Nami with a bundle of stolen items, Kaya quickly realized what had happened. Surprisingly, she didn't mind at all, as she had already come to consider Nami a friend. In the kitchen, Musop shared with Luffy that his father was Yasop, a member of Shank's crew, which Luffy knew well. Usopp then took Zoro to the basement's wine cellar, where they stumbled upon Mary's lifeless body. Shortly after, Clahador revealed his true identity as Kuro, the captain of the Black Cat Pirates, long thought to have been killed by Morgan. Zoro prepared to confront Kuro, but one of Kuro's crew members, Sham, intervened, rendering Zoro unconscious. Sham and Buchi tossed both Zoro and Mary into a well. Uso managed to escape and crossed paths with Kobe and Helmeppo, who had just arrived on the island. Uso urgently informed them about Kuro, who had killed Mary and posed a threat to his friends. However, Helmeppo remained skeptical, believing that Kuro had been eliminated by his father. Meanwhile, Nami found Luffy unconscious after consuming the poisoned blue cream soup prepared by Buchi, who had intended to poison Kaya. Nami attempted to aid Luffy, but heard approaching footsteps. In a pinch, she decided to hide in a kitchen cupboard. Shortly thereafter, Kuro and his crew entered the kitchen and discovered Luffy unconscious. Seeing this, Kuro instructed Buchi and Sham to toss Luffy into the same well where they had thrown Zoro and Mary. Meanwhile, Kobe and Helmeppo arrived at Kaya's house and inquired about the Straw Hat Pirates. Usopp, however, informed them that Koro and his crew were the true pirates responsible for Mary's death and harm to his friends. He explained that Luffy was a compassionate pirate who merely wished to purchase a ship from Kaya. Unfortunately, Usopp lacked concrete evidence of Koro's crimes, and since Kuro had turned Luffy over to the Marines, Kobe and Helmeppo chose to depart. Nami emerged from her hiding place and successfully overpowered Sham, while Zoro eventually regained consciousness in the well. On another front, Wu Soap endeavored to alert Kaya about her butler's true identity as a pirate captain, as well as the fact that Kuro had killed Mary. However, Kaya initially dismissed Usopp's claims as fabrications. It was only when Nami arrived and confirmed Usopp's account, having eavesdropped on Kuro and his crew's conversation in the kitchen, that Kaya believed them. At the stroke of midnight, as Kaya turned 18, Kuro revealed his pirate identity and initiated his plan to murder her. He activated a security system that trapped Kaya inside her home. The story then shifts to the past, showcasing a young Zoro practicing sparring with a girl named Shimatsuki Kuina. Kuina emerged victorious in their training bout and offered Zoro some advice to help him improve his swordsmanship. However, Zoro, believing himself to be the superior fighter, brushed off Kuina's suggestions. He challenged her to a real sword fight instead of using wooden swords, and Kuina accepted the challenge. In their sparring match, 
Queena repeatedly knocked Zoro down, even though Zoro fought with two swords. Eventually, Queena defeated Zoro. However, she felt discouraged because she believed women couldn't become great swordsmen. Zoro encouraged her, pledging to continue practicing and honing their swordsmanship skills until one of them became the greatest swordsman of all time. They practiced diligently, but one day, Queena didn't show up. Her father sadly informed Zoro that she had died in an accident. After Queena's death, Zoro asked her father for permission to carry her sword, as he had promised to become the greatest swordsman for her sake. In the present, Zoro finally escaped the well and planned to return to Kaya's house to confront Kuro. Meanwhile, Luffy woke up and found himself captured by Kobe and the Marines. Luffy told Kobe about Kuro's intentions to harm his friends and pleaded to be allowed to return to Kaya's house to rescue them. Shortly after, Zoro arrived and defeated the Marines. Together, they hurried to Kaya's house to rescue their friends. With Nami and Usopp's help, Kaya reached the East Pavilion and attempted to open the house barricade using a lever in her parents' bedroom. Unfortunately, this alerted Kuro to their location, and he followed them. Luffy and Zoro eventually reached Kaya's house and split up to search for their friends. At the same time, Koro knocked down Usopp and intended to harm Kaya. Fortunately, Luffy arrived in the nick of time to stop Koro. Meanwhile, Zoro engaged in a fierce battle against Buchi and Sham. Luffy and Kuro had a heated argument about Luffy's ambition to become a pirate. Kuro's lightning-fast movements challenged Luffy. He closed his eyes momentarily, relying on his hearing to locate Koro. Eventually, Luffy triumphed over Kuro. With Kuro and his crew defeated, Kaya wanted to express her gratitude by gifting them a ship. Luffy named it the Going Merry and invited Usopp to join their adventure, even though Usopp initially hesitated. However, Kaya encouraged Usopp to chase his own dreams, so he decided to join Luffy's crew. They said their goodbyes, and Luffy and his friends embarked on their new ship. Meanwhile, Kobe apologized to Garp for his failure, but Garp wasn't upset. Instead, he ordered the Marines to attack Luffy and revealed that he was Luffy's grandfather. The Marine attack caused minor damage to their ship, but Luffy refused to back down, despite Nami and Usopp suggesting a quick escape. Garp even launched a cannonball at them, but Luffy used his strength to repel it and damaged one of Garp's ship masts. Helmeppo nearly got crushed, but Kobe saved him. After momentarily paralyzing the marines, Luffy and his friends escaped into a foggy area. However, Nami lost her way due to the dense fog. To their surprise, Luffy's keen sense of smell led them to the aroma of cooking. Luffy guided the ship and they eventually emerged from the fog, finding a floating restaurant called Barati. As Luffy and his crew entered the restaurant, they encountered a young cook named Sanji, who was preparing a special dish of his own creation. However, the restaurant's owner and head chef, Zef, dismissed Sanji's creation as trash, scolding him and assigning him waiter duties after removing him as the sous chef. Sanji approached Luffy's table to take their orders, but had to handle some unruly customers first, using his kick-based martial arts skills. After calming the chaos, Sanji openly showed interest in Nami, which led to some playful teasing from Luffy and the others. Meanwhile, Kobe suggested seeking help from the nearby 77th Marine Branch, but Garp refused and instead contacted Dracula Mihawk, a renowned pirate and one of the seven warlords of the sea. These warlords, like Mihawk, often formed alliances with the world government to deal with other pirates, resulting in their bounties being frozen and more opportunities for criminal activities. Mihawk engaged in a battle with the pirate Don Cree and his crew, agreed to capture Luffy alive as per Garp's request. Back in the restaurant, Zef grew irritated as Luffy couldn't pay the bill, so he forced Luffy to work in the kitchen, washing dishes for a year to settle the debt. Luffy praised Sanji's delicious cooking, but Sanji explained that he had been demoted from sous chef to waiter. 
Sanji told Luffy about his dream to find the all blue, a legendary sea where all four oceans meet. It's a paradise for chefs with rare fish and spices you can't find anywhere else. Suddenly, a hungry pirate crew showed up, and Sanji quickly coached for them. Impressed by his skills and kindness, Luffy invited Sanji to join his crew on the quest for the All Blue. Sanji seemed interested but declined, as he already worked at Barati. Meanwhile, Nami asked about getting to the Konami Islands, and an old man offered to take her for a high fee, which she didn't mind. Later, Mihawk arrived and asked about Luffy. Zoro, a fan of Mihawk since childhood, challenged him to a duel, hoping to become the world's greatest swordsman. Nami tried to stop the duel, knowing Zoro wasn't a match for Mihawk, but Luffy believed Zoro needed to defeat Mihawk to achieve his dream. Nami worried about Zoro's safety, and Zoro asked her why she cared so much, to which she replied that he was her friend. The next morning, Nami packed her stuff and got ready to meet the old man who would take her to the Konami Islands. Luckily, Nami decided to delay her trip to the Konami Islands because she was really worried about Zoro. She had guessed that Zoro would probably lose to Mihawk, so she chose to stay with Luffy and the others. Meanwhile, Zoro was all set for his duel with Mihawk. But surprisingly, Mihawk didn't use his big sword. He pulled out a tiny dagger hidden in his pendant. Zoro felt like Mihawk was underestimating him, so he attacked right away. However, Mihawk easily parried Zoro's blows with his little dagger, showing a big difference in strength. Zoro didn't give up though. He kept attacking, even though none of his hits landed on Mihawk. Mihawk managed to stab Zoro in the chest with his tiny dagger, but he praised Zoro for his courage. Then Mihawk decided to use his huge sword, Yoru. Zoro prepared his Santoryu attack to face Mihawk. But Mihawk broke Zoro's two swords with a single swing and told him to give up. Zoro admitted defeat, never even thinking he could lose. He stood there, ready for the final blow, telling Mihawk that a swordsman should never be cut from behind. Mihawk respected Zoro's bravery and slashed his chest. As Zoro fell from his wound, Mihawk advised him not to rush towards his death. Mahawk saw Luffy wearing his straw hat and realized Luffy's determination to become a pirate king. Mahawk was impressed and said the world needed surprises like Luffy. Instead of capturing Luffy, as Garp had ordered, Mahawk walked away, leaving them. He told Zoro to improve his sword skills and come back another time. As Zoro lay there, almost unconscious and dying, he made a promise to Luffy. He said he wouldn't let this defeat happen again because he didn't want to let Luffy down. Then he lost consciousness, and they rushed to get him back to their ship. Nami told Luffy to go to Barati and find a doctor. But instead, Luffy came back with Zef and Sanji. Surprisingly, Zef knew a lot about old sailor medical techniques. He skillfully stitched up Zoro's wound and closed it using snapper skin to prevent infection and help it heal faster. However, Zef warned them that Zoro was in critical condition and might not make it to the Konami Islands for better treatment. Luffy was confident that Zoro would pull through because he still had to chase his dream of becoming the world's greatest swordsman. Zef suggested talking to Zoro or reading stories to him to let him know that his friends were by his side, which might help him recover. Meanwhile, Mahawk went to Garp on his ship and openly admitted that he had let Luffy go. Garp was annoyed because Mihawk didn't follow his orders to capture Luffy. Mihawk said he wanted to see Luffy's abilities in the Grand Line and suggested that maybe Luffy would find the One Piece. Unknown to them, Kobe secretly overheard their conversation and finally learned that Luffy was Garp's grandson. Sanji noticed that Luffy seemed different, and he realized Luffy felt responsible for what happened to Zoro. He talked to Luffy explaining that being a captain wasn't easy. Captain's decisions could affect the crew's life or death. Sanji told Luffy that if he chose to be a captain, he had to be ready to make tough choices, even if it meant risking his life. The story then shifted to Sanji's past when he worked as a kitchen staff member on a passenger ship. Sanji decided to make a special dish, mentioning his dream of finding the all blue. The chef and others laughed at him, thinking the all-blue was just a myth. 
At the same time, their ship was attacked by a pirate ship led by Zeph, who was skilled at cooking. Zeph tasted Sanji's food, but was surprised when Sanji tried to attack him with a knife, fearing for his life and wanting to pursue his all-blue dream. Later, a big storm hit the ship, killing everyone except Zeph and Sanji. They ended up on a coral island in the middle of the sea. Zeph gave Sanji a bag of food, and Sanji protested because Zeph's bag was bigger. Zeph explained he needed more food because his body was larger. He told Sanji to stay on one side of the island and not disturb him unless he saw a ship. In the following days, Sanji tried hard to survive on the coral island, battling the pouring rain and scorching sun. One night, he spotted lights from a distant ship, but it wasn't heading their way. On the 70th day, Sanji, desperate from hunger, decided to approach Zeph's side of the island to ask for food. To his surprise, Zeph's package didn't have food, it held treasure, and Zeph had survived by eating his own feet. Sanji questioned why Zeph helped him, and Zeph explained that they shared the same dream of finding the All Blue, which truly existed. Back in the present, Sanji told Luffy they were rescued after 85 days on the island. He decided to work for Zeph to improve his cooking skills, but never gave up on his dream of finding the All Blue. Luffy went to Nami, who was reading to Zoro, and she blamed Luffy for not stopping Zoro from the duel. Luffy insisted that everyone should pursue their dreams, but Nami argued that not everyone gets the chance. Meanwhile, Arlong and his crew arrived at Barati, demanding Luffy and the grand line map he had obtained. Nami warned Luffy, suggesting they leave, but Luffy refused. He intended to fight Arlong to protect the people at Barati, impressed by the kindness Zeph and Sanji had shown him and Zoro. Luffy instructed Nami to stay on the ship and guard the Grand Line map, while he and the others headed to Beretti to confront Arlong. When they got to the restaurant, Luffy asked Arlong how he had found them. One of Arlong's crew members revealed that Buggy had been eavesdropping on their conversation by hiding one ear inside Luffy's straw hat all along. Luffy was ready to fight Arlong, but Zeph fired the first shot, which didn't affect fishmen like Arlong. Koro Obi knocked down Zeph with a powerful kick using his wooden leg. Sanji responded by using his kick-based martial arts against Koro Obi, but Koro Obi proved to be a tough opponent. Meanwhile, as Luffy fought fiercely against Arlong, Nami decided to leave the ship. She told the still unconscious Zoro that she never meant to have friends because she always ended up hurting those close to her. During the battle, Luffy managed to turn the tide and counterattack Arlong. However, Arlong discovered Luffy's weakness to seawater and drenched him to weaken him. As Arlong was about to finish off Luffy, Nami intervened, revealing her true connection to Arlong's pirate crew from many years ago. She showed them the stolen Grand Line map and demanded Arlong's departure. Arlong still wanted to kill Luffy, but Nami advised against it, knowing that throwing Luffy into the sea would lead to his death due to his devil fruit power. Upon hearing Nami's plea, Arlong heartlessly threw Luffy into the sea and left with Nami and his crew. Sanji immediately leaped into the water to save Luffy, who couldn't swim and was nearly drowned. Meanwhile, Garp gathered the cadets on the ship's deck and declared that they needed to put all their effort into capturing the Straw Hat Pirates. At Beirati, Sanji wanted to help Zeph clean up the mess caused by Arlong and his crew. However, Zeph insisted that Sanji should leave the restaurant and chase his dream of finding the All Blue. They argued about it because Sanji didn't want to leave Zeph, but eventually, Zeph gave him permission to join Luffy's crew. Back on the ship, Luffy shared the story of what had happened, including their fight against Arlong and Nami's departure. He sounded desperate and hoped Zoro would wake up soon. To Luffy's surprise, Zoro was awake and heard everything. Zoro promised to be Luffy's first mate and be with him until they found the One Piece or perished in the process. Luffy became excited again about their adventure to find the One Piece. Before setting sail, they decided to retrieve Nami and complete their crew. As they prepared to leave, Sanji showed up and agreed to join them. Luffy was thrilled that Sanji had finally accepted his offer. Zeph and the restaurant staff gathered at the pier to see Sanji off, and Zeph gave Sanji some advice and thanked him for saving his life, 
which brought tears to Sanji's eyes. Sanji bid farewell to Zeph and the others, promising to work hard to achieve his dream of finding the All Blue. Usopp asked Luffy how they found Nami, and it turned out that Luffy had made a deal with Buggy's head, which was held by Arlong's crew. They agreed to join forces to find Arlong, since Buggy's body was held hostage. Sanji and Luffy believed that Nami must have had a good reason for joining Arlong's crew, while Zoro thought she might choose to stay loyal to Arlong instead of returning to them. Meanwhile, Nami arrived at Arlong Park and presented the Grand Line map to Arlong. Arlong assured Nami that he always kept his promises, especially to his loyal crew members. Thanks to Nami's intelligence, Arlong used the information to locate the marine base and pirate bases from the Konami Islands to the Kingdom of Go. Arlong assigned Nami to go to Koko Village to collect tribute since they hadn't paid up. Nami explained that the villagers hated her, even her adoptive sister Mujiko seemed to despise her and had left. Nami didn't mind the treatment and spoke to the village head, Genzo, about collecting the tribute. While inspecting the chest, she told Genzo they needed to find other sources of income since the tribute to Arlong had been decreasing over time. Upon noticing Nami's presence in the village, Luffy approached her and inquired about her business there. Nami explained that this was part of her role as a member of Arlong's pirate crew. Suspicious of Nami keeping secrets, Luffy offered their help, but she insisted she didn't need it, urging them to leave before Arlong and his crew discovered them. Usopp and Zoro agreed with Nami, suggesting they leave immediately, but Sanji believed Nami was hiding something. So, Luffy decided to learn more about Nami and followed Genzo's advice to visit Nojiko. When they arrived at Nojiko's place, they were greeted at gunpoint, but Luffy wasn't afraid and asked Nojiko about Nami. Meanwhile, Garp arrived at Barati, seeking information about Luffy. Zeph offered him a free steak meal while they chatted about Luffy. At Arlong Park, a marine captain named Nizumi arrived to collect monthly bribes from Arlong in exchange for covering up his actions in the Konami Islands. Nojiko agreed to share information about Nami with Luffy, but in return, she asked Sanji to prepare a delicious dinner. After enjoying the meal Sanji cooked, Nojiko praised it as the most delicious dish she'd ever tasted. The story then shifted to Nami's past, showing her as a young girl living happily with her adoptive sister Nojiko and mother Bellamere in Koko Village, despite their modest home in an orange grove. Nami's fascination with world maps began in her childhood. She even went so far as to steal a historical atlas of the East Blue to study the world map. However, Belmere caught her and asked her to return the book. Nami argued that she didn't harm anyone and only stole it because she couldn't afford to buy books. This angered Nami because they lived in poverty and all she received from Nojiko were old clothes. She even denied their relationship claiming Nojiko wasn't her sister and Belmere wasn't her mother. This made Belmere furious, and she slapped Nami. Nami then fled to the Orange Grove, with Belmere chasing after her to apologize. Belmere told Nami about their first encounter when she, still a marine, found Nami and Nojiko under the ruins of their village destroyed by pirates. Belmere decided to care for them as her own daughters, doing whatever it took to survive and provide for their needs. The next day, Nami returned the historical atlas to Genzo, promising not to steal it again. However, their village was attacked by Arlong and his crew. Belmere rushed to get Nami and Nojiko to safety. When Arlong and his crew arrived at their home to collect tribute, Belmere paid the money. But when Arlong noticed three plates on the table, he realized that Belmere had daughters. Nami and Nojiko came out of hiding, and Arlong ordered Belamir to pay tribute for her daughters as well. Belmir, with no money left, decided to sacrifice herself so that Arlong would spare Nami and Nojiko's lives. Tragically, Arlong killed Belamir right in front of her daughters. In the present, Luffy was shocked to learn about Nami's past, how she had become a subordinate to Arlong, the pirate who killed her mother. Luffy left the room, with Zoro following him. They climbed to the roof, and instead of being angry or disappointed with Nami, 
Luffy still believed in her goodness, just as he believed in Zoro, Usopp, and Sanji as good people. Meanwhile, Nizumi tried to pressure Arlong into doubling the bribe money, but Arlong bullied Nizumi to the point where the marine captain got scared and left with the original bribe money. After Nizumi and his men left, Nami asked Arlong about their deal because she had managed to collect 100 million berries. Arlong told her to bring the money the next morning, but secretly, he instructed Nizumi to take the money. At Beirati, Zef told Garp that Luffy was a special young man who reminded him of Gold Roger. Zef also mentioned that Luffy had protected Beirati during an attack, so he felt it was his duty to repay Luffy's kindness by not divulging any information about him, even to Garp, who was Luffy's grandfather. Unexpectedly, Kobe and Helmeppo obtained information about Luffy heading to the Konami Islands and promptly informed Garp. That night, Nami secretly unearthed her mother's grave, where she had hidden a treasure chest. However, Nojiko discovered Nami's actions and was furious at her for desecrating their mother's resting place. In the process, Nojiko accidentally broke the chest, revealing that it contained treasure. Nojiko demanded answers from Nami, who then explained that she had struck a deal with Arlong to buy back Koko Village and free its residents. She needed a hundred million berries to do this, so she had joined Arlong's pirate crew to gather the necessary funds. Nojiko was shocked to learn that Nami cared so deeply about the safety of the village and its people, willing to bear their hatred for her. Nizumi arrived with his men to seize the treasures Nami had collected over the years to buy the village's freedom. Nami figured out that Arlong had sent Nizumi when he mentioned the exact amount she needed to pay. She attempted to resist, but the marines easily overpowered her. Meanwhile, Arlong had assembled his crew, ready to destroy Coco Village as part of their plan to conquer the East Blue. Furious and betrayed by Arlong, Nami ran towards the village, desperate to stop the impending disaster. She tried to remove the saw shark tattoo from her arm with a knife, but Luffy arrived just in time to prevent her from harming herself. Nami begged for his help, and Luffy, entrusting his precious straw hat to her, vowed to assist her. On the other hand, Zoro and the rest of the crew were gearing up to support Nami, but they realized that Arlong and his crew had already begun their destructive plan against Koko Village. The story takes us back in time to when a young Nami was held in captivity by Arlong, her feet shackled as she worked on creating a world map. She diligently carried out this task until Arlong decided to release her from her chains when she turned 12 years old. In the present, Nami and her crew arrived at Koko Village, only to discover that Arlong had set the village ablaze. The villagers, led by Genzo, approached Nami, expressing their gratitude for her sacrifices and apologizing for falsely accusing her of betrayal. Genzo pledged that they would unite their efforts to free the village from the clutches of the Arlong pirates. Upon reaching Arlong Park, Nami led Luffy to the map room, while Zoro, Sanji, and Osop engaged in battle against Arlong's henchmen. Zoro managed to defeat his opponent, despite not being fully recovered from previous injuries. Nami hurried to retrieve the Grand Line map and urged Luffy to leave the room with her. However, Arlong suddenly appeared with his distinctive weapon, ready to attack them. He shared his ambition to control the East Blue and other seas, then launched an attack on Luffy, referring to Nami as a mere tool. Luffy, enraged by Arlong's words, defended Nami, emphasizing that she was not a tool but an individual with her own desires and dreams. He instructed Nami to leave while he confronted Arlong in battle. While Zoro and Sanji engaged in a heated argument during their battle with Arlong's men, Usopp found himself in a chase with one of Arlong's henchmen, Chu, who was pursuing him because of the slingshot bullets that accidentally hit Chu's face. Although Chu managed to corner Usopp with his signature attack, Usopp used his wit to trick Chu and seize the opportunity to counterattack, successfully defeating Chu. On another front, Buggy attempted to persuade Sanji and Zoro to free him so that he could reunite with his body and assist them in defeating Arlong's men. However, Buggy's true intentions were cunning, as he fled once his head was reattached to his body. 
Meanwhile, Luffy struggled against Arlong in a fierce battle, while Sanji and Zoro faced off against Arlong's top officer, Koro Obi, who proved to be a formidable opponent. Realizing that defeating Arlong might be a challenge, Luffy decided to shatter Arlong's dream of dominating the East Blue by destroying the room containing Nami's maps. This decision was prompted by Kuro Obi's disrespectful remarks about Nami, which infuriated Sanji, leading him to unleash his signature techniques and ultimately defeat Kuro Obi. Usopp soon arrived, commending Sanji and Zoro for their victories over Arlong's men. Shortly after, Nami appeared, embracing Zoro and Usopp with relief as they had survived the attacks from Arlong's crew. As Luffy cornered Arlong and used his signature attack to defeat him, the entire Arlong park began to crumble. Nami and the others feared for Luffy's safety as they'd witnessed the destruction, but were astonished to see Luffy emerge from the ruins unscathed, declaring their friendship. On the flip side, Garp summoned Nizumi to his ship to inquire about the fire incident in Koko Village and the escalating activities of the Arlong pirates in the Konami Islands. Nizumi, however, spun a tale, accusing Luffy and his crew of orchestrating the Koko Village incident, with Arlong under their control. After defeating Arlong's crew, Luffy and his friends celebrated their triumph with the Koko Village residents. Sanji served up delectable food, and Usopp regaled the villagers with an exaggerated heroic account of his exploits against Arlong's men. Though Usopp embellished his tale, Luffy and the villagers cheered and hailed him as the great Captain Usopp. Their festivities were suddenly interrupted by the arrival of Garp and the Marines, who intended to arrest Luffy. Garp ordered the Marine cadets to apprehend Luffy and his crew, but Kobe refused, asserting that the true culprit behind the Koko village destruction was Arlong, not Luffy. Helmapo similarly defined Garp's orders, despite Garp's threats of severe punishment for insubordination. Garp then issued a challenge to Luffy, urging him to showcase his pirate abilities and prowess. However, Luffy couldn't bring himself to fight his own grandfather, who effortlessly defeated him without breaking a sweat. Despite the severe beating, Luffy refused to yield, standing resolute in his quest to find the One Piece and become the Pirate King. Luffy's laughter during this exchange reminded Garp of Goldie Roger. Recognizing Luffy's unwavering determination to be a true pirate, Garp relented, allowing Luffy to go free, and ordered the Marines to arrest Arlong and his crew. Nizumi, intending to protest, was swiftly knocked out by Nami, who had grown fed up with the corrupt Marine captain. Garp then revealed that his harsh testing was to ascertain Luffy's genuine commitment to piracy rather than mere frivolity. In the end, Garp realized that Luffy was as stubborn as he was and couldn't change Luffy's determination to find the One Piece and become the Pirate King. Garp decided to let Luffy pursue his dreams without his watchful eye, leaving Luffy to his own devices. However, Luffy reassured Garp that he wasn't alone anymore, as he now had friends who would always support him. The next day, Nojiko tried to convince Nami to stay at Koko Village with them, but Nami chose to embark on an adventure with Luffy and his friends. Still, Nojiko assured Nami that Koko Village would always be her home, and she could return any time. Meanwhile, Kobe approached Luffy with a wanted poster. It depicted Luffy as a fugitive with a reward of 30 million berry, the highest in the East Blue. Luffy was overjoyed to see himself as a pirate with such a hefty bounty. He thanked Kobe, who explained that Luffy became a fugitive because of Nizumi's revenge. Before parting ways, Luffy advised Kobe to be a good marine, and Kobe advised Luffy to be a good pirate. Luffy hurried back to the ship to share the news of his wanted poster with his friends. Soon, Luffy's wanted poster spread throughout the East Blue, catching the attention of Makino and Kaya. Makino felt proud of Luffy's achievement, while Kaina was delighted to spot Usopp's face next to Luffy's on the poster. Meanwhile, over at Berati, Zef proudly displayed Luffy's wanted poster in his kitchen, right next to his cherished recipes for Berati's signature dishes. In a different place, Buggy was quite annoyed to find out that the bounty on Luffy's head far exceeded his own. This fueled his determination to take down Luffy. Surprisingly, 
Buggy bumped into Alveda, who was equally determined to hunt down Luffy. As for Garp, he beamed with pride over Luffy's status as the most wanted pirate in the East Blue. Instead of punishing Kobe and Helmeppo for their defiance, Garp decided to personally train them. He recognized their unwavering commitment to justice, even if it meant going against their superior's orders. Elsewhere, my hawk visited Shanks and his crew, delivering Luffy's wanted poster as a gift. Shanks was elated by Luffy's success and invited Myhawk to join them in celebrating with a drink. Back on their ship, Luffy made a thoughtful gesture by bringing aboard some orange trees to help Nami feel at home. Meanwhile, Nami and the rest of the crew had a surprise for Luffy, their very own Jolly Roger, representing the Straw Hat Pirate's unique identity. As they embarked on their journey to the Grand Line, Luffy and his friends reminisced about their childhood dreams and resolved to fight together to make those dreams a reality. The series concludes with a scene of someone using their cigarette to burn a wanted poster featuring Luffy. The main message of this series is to never hold back in pursuing your dreams, as everyone deserves the chance to strive for what they want. Additionally, it emphasizes the importance of doing good deeds, as such kindness will ultimately return to us in positive ways.